Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 20th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering an informational scene that will take us from our level select into our game with information about how to control the game. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, I know I've said it over the last couple of tutorials if you play Timmy and Mousy, but once again, if you play Timmy and Mousy, you'll know after you've selected uh, your level, you go into this little like fake sort of loading screen that has information on what to do, and then you go into the level. So we're going to recreate that process here. And the idea of what I want to do is I want to create a very, very faint outline background, uh, very dark, of the level we're about to go into. So in this case, it's going to be Desert Run. And that is going to be the backdrop. We're going to deal with UI on this one, as well as a script that will take us uh, from loading, displaying, animating, and then take us into our level. But again, all these scripts will be modified further down the line when we've got more, more, more dynamic things in place. So firstly, let's create a new scene. So file, new scene, uh, create, and let's go to our main camera, zoom in just a little bit, and let's get something in place just to give uh, an illusion of a background. Uh, we can go to our pack, go to prefabs, and let's put in um, the terrain like that. Let's turn it, in fact, let's center it, and let's turn it around by 90 degrees. And there we go. I'm not going to go into this too much more, but by all means, if you want to, I think you should. You know, do what you want to, make this look however you want to make it look. Uh, but that will do the trick. Now, to make this dark, we can use a similar technique to what we did in the last part of the level select screen by turning everything off. But for now, let's turn directional light off. And you can already see just how dark it is. And I kind of like how that looks already. So I guess we could always go with that if we wanted to. Uh, if we go to main camera and you can change just the coloring of it to dark and then turn off the uh, sky box if you wanted to. So if you go to window, go to rendering, lighting, environment, and then turn the sky box off if you wanted to go with that and make it look even darker. Again, it's, it's entirely up to you. It's your game at the end of the day. I think for the Timmy and Mousy one, it is roughly this dark, uh, but I'm going to stick with that kind of darkness for now. So what do we do here? Well, we're going to put in, um, let's say, let's have a little loading thing at the bottom. It doesn't really mean it's loading, but it's just an illusion of what we're doing here. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI, let's go to text, and we'll just call this loading. And literally we'll just type the word loading. Uh, let's anchor it down the bottom right. Double click so we can see it. Uh, let's increase this a little bit. So let's have this bold, let's have this as 76. Let's change the canvas while we're at it as well to uh, scale with screen size. Let's set the usual things here. And you'll notice at this point we're going much quicker than we have previously because a lot of this we've already learned how to do this and we know what we're doing. And just to kind of reiterate what we are doing, we're making this loading box appear in the bottom right and then we're going to quickly animate it. Uh, let's have some alignment. Let's place it here. Uh, have a look at that in the game, that's fine. So now let's create a quick little animation of it bouncing together. Um, so let's have uh, animation. Let's go to create and let's have loading. In fact, I need capitalization. Loading anim. And I'm going to press record and I'm going to set the first keyframe as font size 76. And then after I'm going to say 60 seconds, I'm going to have it set. In fact, no, we'll do it as 30 frames. Sorry, 30 frames. We'll have this as 36. And then once again, after another 30 frames, I'm going to set it back to 76 and then stop the recording and press play. So this kind of just gives a bit of illusion to it all. 
See what, what's happening there? It, it's just giving that. Like, you'll have seen that sort of animation in a loading bar before. So that's what we're just recreating. We're going to leave it as looping, so as it actually kind of makes sense. Uh, what we will do is we will bring in a... In fact, we'll do a fade in and a fade out screen because I think that would make a lot of sense. So while we're at it, let's save our scene into the scenes folder and have this as uh, just information. Okay. So let's go to scenes. Let's go to main menu. And while we're here, let's go to the canvas. Let's take fade in and fade out. Copy both of those. Head to our information scene paste them in the hierarchy and drag them into the canvas. And what should happen here is we should see the fade in happen. Cool. So now what we need to do is put something on screen to give us uh, you know, direction on how we control this. So we can go to game object. Let's go to, um, let, what can we go to? Let's go to text. Let's do this via text, nice and easy. W key. And let's have this as W. Uh, let's have this anchored on the top. In fact, we'll have this anchored in the middle, okay? You can have it on the top if you want to. Zero out the position. Let's increase the size, 76. Let's have it bold. Let's have it aligned center. Let's make this a little bigger, maybe about there. Let's drag it into position. Uh, again, a, a lot of this you can have as you know whatever you want to do here. It's it's entirely up to you. Yeah, that should do. And also, I want to hold Control, press D to duplicate that. I want to bring it out this way. And I'll change this to D key. And I'm going to hold Control, press W. Uh, sorry, W. Press D on the W key. Bring it upwards to there. And we'll have this expanded out. And we'll have this as move left. And we'll have this named as left key. Hold control, press D to duplicate. Move this over here. It's a roughly round about there. Again, you can align this however you want to. This one will say move right. So it looks like this now. And let's have that named as right key. And finally, let's take this and change it to D on the actual text. Now let's animate these in the same way that we did with the animation previously. So what we could theoretically do is let's see if we can drag and drop the loading anim onto these keys. So drag and drop onto W key and drag and drop onto D key and press play. And they do the same thing. Cool. Finally, let's make it so as we have a jump key as well. So let's have uh, the W, hold control, press D to duplicate, bring it down below. And let's have this as space bar. Let's increase the size to roughly there place it there. Let's take these, uh, hold control, press D. Let's move that below and have this as jump. So if we press play now, we should see at least some information on the screen telling us what we do. Cool. Now it doesn't look fantastic. I admit it's really rushed and really terrible. You take your time and work on how you want this to look. You know, you do whatever you need to. But what we'll do now is we'll make this take us to the level itself. So we need the scripts folder. Right click, create a new script. We'll call this load to stage. So this script is going to become important later on in development when we use it to manipulate what level we go to. But for now, all we need to do is have serialized field. And we just need to have the uh, game object of fade out. So game object, fade out, semicolon. And what we'll need is um, a coroutine. So I, enumerator, we'll call this load level. 
open close bracket, open close bracket, uh, sorry, open curly bracket. Now we'll wait for, I'm going to say three seconds. So yield, return new, wait for seconds. We'll wait for three, semicolon. At that point, we'll say fade out dot set active is true. And then after two more seconds, that's when we'll load into our level. So yield, return new, wait for seconds two. And what we'll do is we'll go to the top and we'll add in the namespace for scene management. So using unity engine dot scene management, which means that the last line of code inside our coroutine of load level is going to be scene manager dot load scene and in brackets one. Currently it's one. It will change as and when we develop more and more in our game. Let's get rid of the update method. We don't need it. Let's get rid of the annotations. We don't need them. However, in void start, we need to say start coroutine and in brackets, the name of that coroutine, which is load level. Open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, save. And this script, I will put in the pinned comment if you want it. So head down there, click the link and it will take you to where the script is and you can download it for free. Now let's head back into Unity and then drag and drop load to stage onto any object in here. It doesn't really matter what object it gets attached to because not a lot is going to go on in this scene. But I suppose for continuity and keep everything uniform, let's create a new game object and say uh, info controls, drag and drop onto there, which is load to stage. And fade out, we need to add into there, which is that. So let's save that scene, let's press play, and let's make sure that this takes us to our level. Cool, it does. So one thing that we need to do is move our fade out a little further down here, so it kind of fades everything out. So we know that works, so why don't we check out the whole process from start to finish? So let's resave our scene, let's go to scenes, let's go to... Um, in fact, let's go to build settings because we need to add the open scene, which is scene three. So that means that if we go to our stage select and we now need to make sure that this play button actually works. So this is the last section that will make us able to play. So stage select controls, that needs a script adding to it, which is going to be uh, the script that allows us to change levels and everything. So let's start creating that script now. Uh, let's go to a new script and let's have this as stage controls and then open that up in Visual Studio. Uh, not a lot is going to go on in this one, but we know how to create a button. Uh, we know what we want the button to do. So firstly, let's add the using Unity Engine dot scene management and then let's create um, the void uh oh no it's public isn't it public void press play open close bracket open curly bracket so what happens when we press play well we're going to make this uh more interesting a little later on but for now all we want to do is just take us to the level we'll make it more immersive at some other point we just want to make sure that the whole process works so when we press play we want to do scene manager dot load scene and in brackets, I believe it's scene three, semicolon. So let's save that script. Uh, in fact, let's get rid of the annotations. We will need void start and void update at some point, so I am going to leave them in there for now. Uh, so head back into Unity once it has compiled. And let's make sure that we have the script in our scene. There we go. And let's make sure that the button is working properly. So select and play button. Uh, list is empty, so let's click plus, drag and drop the controls onto there, click no function, click stage controls, and then click on press play. So let's make sure that this now works for the next segment. It does, cool. Like I said, we'll work with that a little bit later on, but let's make sure this whole process works as intended now. So save, head back to scenes, head to main menu, let's press play. 
So far so good. Yeah, so this will take us to our level select. Cool. And then we press play, it will take us to our information scene. Cool. And then it will take us to our level. And we hit that. And the whole process starts all over again. Cool. So we have the whole flow, the whole process working absolutely perfectly. Excellent. So next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll get back to some actual game development now. And I think we're going to add in some gems into our game. And we'll also add how far we've run into our game and display it on the UI in the level itself. Uh, so remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. And I'll see you in the next one.